we do have to be the hands and feet. And, and, and what, what is it in us that stops us from doing that? What is it in us that stops us from following through, from getting involved? Um, I think there's a lot of times, if, if we're being honest, it's because, uh, well, I, I've got my own issues. Right? I'm, I'm not prepared. Maybe, maybe when my life gets a little straightened out or, or I'm not so busy and, and we got all these things, but you know, we've got to remember that God made man in his image. Okay? And, and he went through this process. He, he, he made man in his image and then the next thing he did was he blessed man. And then the next thing he did was he gave man dominion, which is rule over everything on the earth. Guys, it's us. We as the people of God, are to rule over this earth. Do you understand that? I mean, the enemy has rule. The enemy has place, and, and we've given that to him. But God's design is for his people to rule over this earth. It's what he desired from the very beginning. And when he looked at what he created, he said after he created man, it is very good. Right? It was very good. This was the pinnacle of creation was when he created man. And so not only does he care about creation of every single human from before the womb, right? We say, we say from the minute of conception, but it's actually before that because he knew you before you were knitted together in your mother's womb, but he also cares for every human life, including those who are making these decisions. He's a, he cares for those who have chosen to have abortions, and maybe that's some of you in this room, and there is grace for you. Right? There is a God who loves you and cares for you and will forgive you. Okay, and, and we as believers have to remember that and keep that. I loved some of that stuff that she shared about that. Like, if we're not going to show them grace, who is? And if we're not going to show them grace, are we being the hands and feet of God? I would say we probably are not. And so, last thing I want to share here about this is, is we have this expectation for ourselves sometimes that we kind of need to become perfect. Right? We have this, this thing in, in, in Christianity, I'm supposed to be like Jesus, and Jesus is perfect, right? And we believe that. He's sinless. He was perfect. And my goal is to be like Jesus. That's what I'm told. That's what church is all about. Become like Jesus. Become like Jesus. Yes, that is what we are supposed to do. But, but I want to tell you that we have to remember that we as people, right, we still got issues. We still got a ways to go. And, and can I tell you that Jesus is not coming back? For perfect people. I'm going to tell you where I see that. I see that in the scripture. In Ephesians 5.27. We use this all the time for uh, weddings. It's talking about wives submitting to husbands. And husbands loving their wives. And in verse 27. Paul says that he, Jesus, might present her to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle in any or any such thing. But that she, the church should be holy and without blemish. See, Jesus wants his church, his bride, to be spotless, without wrinkle, or any such thing. You know, he, he says that he's going to take this church, this glorious church, and he's going to present it to himself. That means that he's going to place that beside him. He's going to take the church, the body of believers, his bride, place it beside him. And he's looking for us to be prepared, right? He's looking for us to prepare ourselves. When a bride gets ready for her wedding, here's what we see. If any of you have ever been bridesmaids or, or you've married a daughter or if you're a woman and you've been married, you know how this works. Everything's about you, right? Everything's about the bride and it's, it's about the bride. Everybody is invested in we want this bride to be as perfectly prepared for this day as we can possibly get her, right? Everything that we can do. Does she got spots and blemishes? Let's put some makeup on. Let's cover them up. Let's make her look good for the pictures, for the people. Is her dress wrinkled? Let's iron that. Let's work it all out, make it all look beautiful. Is there any other thing, right? I mean, you got like women circling around her like, like wet hornets, right? They're just like, is there any the hair out of place? Let's pin it back. Is there anything at all? You know, we want you to be perfect for this day. 
And what do we say to her when we see her? You say it even at the receiving line when you're leaving. You're like, oh, you look perfect today. Does she look perfect? Probably not. Right? There's probably something uh, we could pick out. There's probably something that we could be like, well, I mean, you did have that one hair that was kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of flickering around. And, and that, you know, Ashley, you probably know she had to edit that out, you know, out of her face in the, the wedding pictures and these kinds of things. But there's probably something going on. We cover up the spots. We iron out the wrinkles. We pin back those hairs. And we give pep talks and support them and encourage them on that day whenever there's doubt and there's fear, right? It's like, no, it's going to be okay. You're just, you're just nervous. It's all right. We, you know this is what you want. It's going to be okay. And this is the same way that we're supposed to be presenting Jesus with a perfect bride, right? We don't have spots because our blemishes are covered by the blood of Christ that we learned about last week when John was preaching, right? In him we're made righteous. We don't have these wrinkles because we as the church are to be ironing out things and making sure that they're right and we're not to have any such thing because we're supposed to be helping each other with the things that we can't reach, with the things that we can't do on our own. And that's not just in here. Guys, it's got to be for the people that are out there as well, those that we can reach, that we can circle around. And so John asked me last week, he said, like, this is such a John question because I don't normally think like this, but he's like, Pastor Tim, where do you want the church to be in five years? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just trying to think about next Sunday, you know, or whatever, whatever is going on next, you know. And I, I thought about it, and my answer really was, it goes right along with the vision that God's given us for the church and part of why we changed the name. Part of the reasons we changed the name here is some of them are very similar to the reason you guys did at LPHS. And it's like, really what my desire is is just for the church to be a place where people will come in and first and foremost that they truly connect with God, right? That they really they encounter his presence, that they know who Christ is, that it's not just a mental knowing, but that they get to know him. Right? That it's, it's a relationship that is built, that's, that's flourishing, but, but also that people would come in and get to know one another so we can do this other part. So we can work together, that we can team up around one another and help one another because you know what? We need one another. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't know where I would be without some of the people in this room. Okay? And some of the people who are not in this room today and have been in the past, but, but we have to be those who are ministering to one another. This is what I told them. I said, what I really want for the people in here is to know Christ and to minister to one another. You notice that last part? Minister to one another. Yes. Not all come to me. Not all come to Christy or to Bud or to Mark, one of the elders. And it's not because we don't want to invest time in all of you. We do and we will today. Whatever you need, if you need something, you let me know and we're here for you. But the goal, the purpose of the church is that at some point we're all invested and know each other and we're ministering to one another. Amen. Right? Because there are things that there's the person sitting to the left and the right of you right now can minister to you ways that I will never be able to. They've had experiences that I've never had, right? You may have a relationship or some kind of connection with them that you would never have with me. It's, it's, it's we got to be in this together and invested together. And it's the same way with people that are outside of here. Ecclesiastes tells us that two are better than one, right? It goes on to say at the end of that that, you know, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We use this in weddings all the time, but me, you, plus Jesus, there, there's nothing that can defeat that. There's nothing that can overcome that. And we got to quit spending so much time trying to be perfect people and just try to be the bride of Christ. Just try to be his church, right? So how do I fit into that? What do I have to do to serve God to help be the part of the church that he's created to be? Right? Because we all have different gifts and talents. We all have different things that we're here for. And, and we can be the perfect bride without us all being perfect people. I know that for a fact. You might not 
might not agree with me, but my wife is not a perfect person. Okay? She's not a perfect person. She has struggles, right? She has issues. But I'm going to tell you that she's the perfect bride for me. Amen. Okay, she is the perfect bride for me. She's the exact perfect person that I need in my life. And I need her every day. She's the one that I want, right? Flaws and all. She's the one that I want. There's not any other woman in this world that I want. I want her as my bride. Why is this? It's because of my desire for her, right? I desire her to be my bride, and because I desire her, that means that she is the perfect bride for me. Okay? Now, when we apply this spiritually, we're not perfect people because we all have our struggles, we all have our issues, we all have our insecurities, but we as the church are the perfect bride for Jesus because, listen to this, we are the ones that he desires. And if we are the people that he desires, then we are the perfect bride for him. And listen, on top of that, Jesus can do something for us that there's no man, no groom can do for any other bride. Is that he can and will one day make us perfect. Right? He will make us perfect. He will make us whole. He will bring us complete healing, complete deliverance from every single thing that we deal with in our lives. We read in Revelation as he's coming back, it talks about that passion, that fire in his eyes. Right? And that fire in his eyes is for what? It's not he's mad at his enemies. It's passion for his bride. It's passion for the church. As we near that day, we've got to continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Can we get ready like a bride does for an earthly wedding? Can we rally around one another and say, what can I do to help? What is it that you need? What is it that you can't do that I can do for you? Can we help to apply Christ to people's blemishes, right? Lead them to him. Show them who he is. Can we help to smooth out the wrinkles? Can we help to make sure that there's nothing that's out of sorts that doesn't get attended to? Because I believe, and I wrote this before I even knew the songs Jason was leading with earlier, I believe that Jesus is worth it. I, I believe that he is worth it, and he's worth it all. I believe that he deserves it. And so we've got to get help if we need help, and we've got to help others. Amen? Amen. All right. You would stand with me. We're going to gonna, uh, close out by spending a few moments in prayer. And if you want to sit down during this, you're more than welcome to in a moment as well. But... Um, Jason had to leave early, so we're, it's going to be a little bit different. Are you guys okay with something being a little bit different? Yes. I don't, want, don't throw anything. Don't get in an uproar or anything like that. We are just going to play a song up there, and the words should still be up here. But what we want to do is we just want to give opportunity. We don't like to ever leave without giving some kind of opportunity for people to receive prayer if they would like to. Um, so here in just a moment, we're going to open up the altars, and Christy and uh, Cheryl, if I can get you guys and Bud to come down. Um, they'll be available just to pray with you for anything that you need. Listen, uh, we believe that as we come together and we pray the prayer of faith, we believe that our God is listening. We believe that he answers prayer. We believe that there's no prayer that's too insignificant. There's no prayer that's too small, no request that's too small. So if you have a need, I just want to encourage you to come this morning. Uh, but if you would just for a moment bow your heads and close your eyes. And Father, we thank you for Tamala, we thank you for LPHS, we thank you for the work that they're doing there, and we ask right now for your blessing upon that ministry, Lord. We ask for every single need to be met, Lord. We thank you for the work that's, being going, that's going on, the construction right now. Uh, we thank you for your favor in all of that, Lord, as they get this mobile, uh, mobile stuff going, Lord. We pray for your favor in providing every last dollar, every last thing that they need for that as well, Lord. We pray for that eternal impact, and I thank you for uh, Tamala's heart and the vision for that place and what they're doing, Lord. Help them to reach 
more people for your kingdom, Lord. I, I, I thank you for even their methods and how they're carefully trying not to push away or exclude anybody. Lord, I pray that you open doors for them to be able to speak about you in, in a more real way, that people would be curious, people that would uh, want to know more, and I know that they'll be faithful to share that as that happens as well. So we just ask for your blessing upon them. Lord, as we get ready to worship you for a moment here, Lord, God, we just want you to we want you to just lay things on our heart, whatever it is that we need. If there's something that we need to come to the altar and just lay down on our own, uh, Lord, we just pray that you would show us what that is. And as we come forward and ask for a prayer from people, Lord, we just ask you to move right now in power. We ask for you to meet every need. Your word tells us that we have every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus, everything in the heavenlies. And so right now, as we worship you, Lord, we just pray that you would speak to your people, that we would hear your voice and receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name.